Hi guys, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Martin, or as a comic book collector. What I do in this channel is I show off four books from random and I end on a key issue. Uh, I am filming this on Sunday morning. It's the last day of, of June uh, and we are about a month away from the Deadpool movie. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because I wanted to show off this first issue. It's Wolverine issue 139, uh, written by Eric Larson uh, with fantastic artwork by uh, Lyle Francis Yu. Uh, I wasn't reading uh, Wolverine at the time. Uh, it was just stuff that I was buying off the shelf. In hindsight, I should have been reading this monthly uh, because I'm going back uh, and I'm buying Wolverine issues. Whenever I can find them piece by piece, uh, whether at conventions or online, um, but it's all in this era that uh, I'm really uh, fixated on. Uh, there's just something about it. There's a, a sense of um, unknown um, that kind of drags me in. And I also, I just, I love uh, use artwork. Uh, it's sketchy. It's not gritty so much, but it's sketchy. It's action-packed. Um, and um, for my money, Eric Larson uh, can certainly write a, a, a fun Wolverine story. So there we go. That's uh, Wolverine 139. <laughs> now, the next uh, issue I want to show off is Archie Comics, uh, uh, Archie 219, uh, and uh, I was going through uh, the boxes up there, yeah, up there, <laughs> and uh, I just, I saw this cover and I thought, is this an innuendo cover? Not so much, um, but, uh, so what we have is we have Miss Grundy saying to Archie, Archie, take your seat. And uh, Archie's saying, but you said should, uh, students should develop outside interests. And there's these two girls walking past the window. Ah, uh, Archie. <laughs> um, now, I got this for a good price because uh, if you can see, I don't know how well you can see, but there's a chunk taken out of the, the top uh, corner here. Yeah, actually, you can't see it too well. I can, maybe it's the, uh, the plastic that it's in. But yeah, there's a little chunk that's been uh, either torn away or nibbled at. Um, so I got it for a good price. So there we go. The next issue is Werewolf by Night, issue 25. Uh, now this series went for 43 issues. I have all the issues now. So I am a happy boy <laughs> because um, I remember when <clears throat> it would have been late 90s. Uh, I was at, um, what are they called? What the heck, the heck is that so called? Alternate Worlds. It's called Alternate Worlds, and it was uh, in uh, like the fancy part of Melbourne, in uh, in Windsor, uh, on Chapel Street. That's where uh, all, all the uni students stay, all the the uh, the the alternative lifestyle people go, um, and all the the shops seem to just sell books at a at a increased value. Uh, and um, yeah, so this was in the nineties, and I, I was looking at all the back issues and thinking, you know. I could start getting back issues and really uh, increase how many books I'm reading because at the time all I was doing was uh, going to conventions and getting back issues at conventions. So I went to uh, Alternate Worlds and I was looking through and I was looking at all their uh, Werewolf by Night uh, issues. But uh, what they'd had at the time was uh, on the front of the um, the area for, for Werewolf by Night, you could pull up the sleeve and it had all their available issues uh, with the price next to them. And I was looking at the value, and they were all like $20, $20. Uh, and then issue 32 was $1,200. And this was in the 90s. And I was like, wow, that's uh, that's a bit much. Uh, and even even $20 at the time uh, for me was a bit much. Um, I wasn't working. I was still, uh, I, I, I was either finishing school or just finished school. Uh, and uh, yeah, money was uh, a bit of an issue for me. Uh, so twenty dollars to spend on a book, especially in the nineties, was a bit much. But anyhow, uh, this is uh, issue twenty-five, as I said, and um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> now, the key issue for the video—it's uh, not like a huge grail. It's not—I um, don't know if you'd even classify this as a key. I'll put this to to my viewers: um, Is this a key or is it not? Here we are, Alpha Flight issue one fifteen uh, with this lovely uh, Pat Broderick uh, uh, cover. Uh, I think he also did the interiors. 
Um, and <clears throat> it's uh, near the end of the run for Alpha Flight. I think it went for 125 issues, something something like that. Um, but we have the first appearance of Wire. Uh, here's how it's uh, written. But it's uh, just this weird guy who has these wires coming out of his body. Uh, kind of like um, a more grotesque version of uh, Amiga Red. Um, I remember reading this issue because I, I got the entire run of Alpha Flight in one big light and I was reading them back to back. So it's just a random issue. Um, uh, but yeah, I was reading it and I was like, yeah, this is a, this is a weird character. And I, I don't remember them doing too much with him. And to this day, I don't think they're, they're doing with anything with him now. Uh, but visually, um, the Alpha Flight costume, I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. I liked how they all were in uh, their, basically they were all in the Canadian flag. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> so yeah, that's the video for today. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. I would really appreciate any feedback. Uh, if there's anything you want to see, any questions you want to ask, please do, because uh, I read everything. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.